الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين بعثه الله شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا لله بإذنه والسراج منيرا فاسن فهم وزاكم الله خير for everyone uh, that works at uh, Radio 76 uh, for having me on that's very very extremely kind of them in fact so it's an absolute pleasure to be here uh, to give this small segment where we hope to inshallah enlighten the viewers and the listeners of some of the acts that soften one's heart. Uh, in today's day and age, living in a very sexualized uh, society where you see so much dragging you to haram, we know as the Messenger وسلم, told us, one's heart may become blackened. Every time we fall into a sin, a black dot is placed on one's heart. And then he keeps uh, on becoming blemished and tarnished through these black dots to the point where his whole heart has become blackened. Right, and then Subhanallah, when you place goodness in front of this individual who has now uh, suffered from the blackening of his heart, uh, he won't be able to become activated by the goodness that he sees. And لا يعرف معروفا ولا ينكر منكرا. You see him uh, diving into the haram that is then placed right before his eyes, not hesitating to stay away or to refrain from that which is going to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah to protect us from this kind of heart. So we're always as Muslims looking for ways to better ourselves, to have these hearts that um, is going to you know, be pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And eventually when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have that qalb that is salim. The qalb that has been described in the Quran as a salim. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم يوم لا ينفع مال ولا بنون إلا من أتى الله بقلب سليم The day when wealth and likewise your children will be of no benefit and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that which is exempt the one who meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that heart that is سليم the scholars they uh, the scholars of tafsir they explained what this سليم heart means if you translate it literally it means the heart that is sound what does this entail a heart uh, that doesn't have anything that is associating parents of Allah, any innovations, and likewise any of the sins that uh, uh, displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when an individual has cleaned his heart from all that which is displeasing to Allah azza wa jal, all different types of sins, we know it varies between major uh, and also minor, uh, everything that is displeasing to Allah, that one cleans his heart from, this is the sound heart that we want to be meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. So a couple of points that I have written down inshallah ta'ala I thought would be beneficial. Uh, the first one bi ta'ala that is really going to soften one's heart is ta- is it, <coughs> it is itharullahi ala kulli shay wal a'malu salihah. It is preferring Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above everything else. At times we find ourselves in these predicaments where the haram is so tempting. It could even be that your family or your friends are inviting you to this act that is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shaytan he beautifies it we know through the story of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam the devil Iblis he beautified it for them right he swore by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that which he is inviting them to will lead them to prosperity and Allah tells us وَقَاسَمَهُمَا إِنِّي لَكُمَا لَمِنَ النَّاصِحِينَ he took qasam or kasmat right as they say I think in Urdu he swore by Allah Azza wa Jal, Inni lakuma lamin al nasihin, and so many different forms of uh, ta'kid, of, uh, of surety and confirmation that he gave them. That when you do what I'm telling you to carry out, you know, you're going to abide forever and ever here in Al Jannah. The Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he told us in numerous narrations, right, they were prevented from eating from that tree. However, the devil, devil, he beautified it for them. The devil is not going to come to you and say, this is haram, go and do it. No, he'll try to beautify it for you as much as he can. Right? So he swore by Allah, I'm indeed a sincere advisor. You eat from this tree, then you will be in al Jannah forever. Right? And it's very similar to the kind of whispers that we get today. Just do it. It's only for a couple of hours. Right? You still have your whole life ahead of you. You can repent tomorrow. You can repent the day after. You can repent in a year's time. Right? All of these whispers, 
is what we hear every now and again from the devil. So here, the point that I mentioned was al-ithar, right? Which is to prioritize and to prefer what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you above everything else, right? Above everything else. One of the great scholars of the past, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, وَلَيْسَ لِلْقُلُوبِ سُرُورٌ وَلَا لَذَّةٌ تَامَّةٌ إِلَّا فِي مَحَبَّةِ اللَّهِ وَالتَّقَرُّ بِإِلَيْهِ بِمَا يُحِبُّهُ وَلَا تُمْكِنُ مَحَبَّةُ إِلَّا بِالْعِرَاضِ عَنْ كُلِّ مَحْبُوبٍ سِوَاهِ He says, the heart will not be able to acquire that ultimate happiness. The sweetness that everyone is looking for Right, except by loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This ultimate sweetness and this great happiness that we all are crying out for. Everyone today, if I asked, right, would you want to be happy? Everyone will put their hands up. This is something that people are ready to pay millions for, just to be able to be happy, to live a life that is filled with joy. Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, I meet multi-millionaires all the time. You go on the Instagram accounts, you go on their Facebook accounts, and it seems that they are living the life. This is what is very apparent from their pictures that they upload. However, as I always tell the brothers and the sisters, what you see on Instagram is only what? Five seconds, 15 seconds of the 24 hours of their day, subhanAllah. You only get to see what people want you to see. No one's going to want to show you that they are upset or that they are going through sadness and sorrow and happiness. No one wants that. A lot of times when I'm in the UK, I sit with rappers. I sit with drug dealers, right? Who flash whatever glitters and glamours of their world that they, uh, that they own, right? But when he's sitting in front of me, he owns up to everything that he's going through hoping to receive some guidance and inspiration to better his life, right? This is the reality of the matter, subhanAllah. Uh, I also collect, right, the life stories or, uh, you know, first-hand statements and experiences of footballers, right? I have a page on my iPhone. For those who have iPhones, you have the notes, and I normally save on the notes page, right, whenever... I see a multimillionaire or a billionaire or one of these footballers who comes out complaining about his depression, complaining about his sadness and how all of this fame and money didn't really bring in the happiness that he was looking for. Right, subhanAllah. I know if I drop some of these names, you guys will get very, very excited. One of them is Thierry Henry, right? As we were growing up supporting Arsenal, he was the footballer that everybody wanted to be like, right? That everyone looks up to in terms of uh, football, soccer, you guys call it soccer, right? Soccer. SubhanAllah recently, one of the other very well-known footballers came out. His name is Jesse Lingard, was playing for Manchester United. Exact same thing. He said uh, he struggled to overcome the difficulties that he had to deal with in his time at Manchester United, right? And then he led him to all sorts of stuff. And I love quoting uh, Jim Carrey that everyone, I'm sure, has heard of. Comedian slash actor slash Canadian slash American. He said something very, very powerful. He said, uh, I wish that everybody could become rich and famous and do everything that they dreamt of so that they can realize that it's simply not the answer. I'll repeat that again. He says, I wish that everybody could become rich and famous and do everything that they dream dreamt of so that they can realize that it's simply not the answer. The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created our hearts, my brothers and my sisters, it craves for its creator, right? It needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't he our creator? Has everything come into existence accidentally? Of course not. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has beautifully created the mountains and constructed this world, right? It would be uh, absolutely ridiculous to say that these different uh, uh, technological advances and creations has come out of nowhere, right? And then you see, subhanAllah, the creation of Allah that has been uh, constructed so well, right? Uh, so just look around you. Just look at how you have been created as a human being. Just yesterday I was telling some of the brothers and sisters, right? A, a bone the size of maybe what, one or two millimeters, if that moves out of place, 
you might find yourself in a wheelchair for a very long time. This is just maybe a small part out of all of the different bones and limbs inside of your body. If that moves out of place, how would you be? How would you feel? Right? And we thank Allah Azza wa Jal for well-being every day when we wake up and we're able to move around so freely. So the point is, my brothers and my sisters, right? Put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first and see that which you will experience thereafter. Right? Al-Allamatu ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala passed away in the year 751. He would say, Man arada safa'a qalbihi fal yu'thiri allaha ala shahwati. You want that pure and clean heart. You want that satisfaction and contentment. Then he says, put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above and beyond all of your temptations. Right? Like I said, don't ever forget this example, my brothers and my sisters. You are in that predicament and your friends are inviting you to do that which is haram and the shaitan is whispering. It is only for a couple of moments. It is only one day. These whispers normally come on the day of Eid. After you've been fasting, the whole month of Ramadan is just a couple of hours. It's just one night. Right? And then subhanAllah, you engage in that haram. And it ends up destroying a lot of that which you've done in the month of Ramadan. SubhanAllah. Not so long ago, I think this is worth sharing. Uh, a brother messaged, commenting on one of the videos that we uploaded onto the internet. It would normally go around every Eid, right? Me saying every single Eid, every Eid. We hear about somebody who died with alcohol in his mouth. We hear about somebody who may have died inside of the club or doing the wrong things that he shouldn't have, right? So this brother from Canada messaged me uh, with a picture of a rapper and also his friend that is standing next to him. And he commented by saying, Right? You weren't lying when you said every Eid someone dies in a state that is displeasing to Allah. And then he made dua for the brother who died inside of the club. SubhanAllah. That's how he died inside of the club on the day of Eid. Right? Also, uh, the great scholar of the past, Ibn Taymiyyah, who passed away in the year 732, says something very, very powerful. He says, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ كُلَّ مَنْ أَحَبَّ شَيْئًا لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَلَا بُدَّ أَنْ يَضُرَّهُ مَحْبُوبُهُ He says, no, that anyone who prioritizes something before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's bound to be hurt by that. It's only a matter of time before you are hurt by that which you are prioritizing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. SubhanAllah, whenever I come across this statement, it reminds me of all of the DMs, right? The private messages that young brothers and sisters, and likewise those who are older, right? When they send me their messages about their haram relationships, them being stuck in that which is displeasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? How many a time do I hear a sister saying, he made me all of these promises. He said that I would be his Khadija, radiallahu anha, right? And then when I started a relationship with him, we did all sorts of these haram things and whatever have you, eventually just left me for somebody else, right? And brothers at the same time, likewise, complaining about that which is similar, right? When you start something with haram, don't expect my brothers and my sisters any good to come out of it. It's bound uh, to be filled with haram and the barakah, right? The blessings that we're looking for will be not found in this kind of situation, right? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. So like we mentioned, my brothers and my sisters, the first was, putting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before everything else. When you turn down that invitation, that invitation which is going to lead you to haram, see how you feel almost instantly. That pleasure and that satisfaction, my brothers and my sisters, is something that can really not be put into words. Right? It's something that you can't put into words. That joy, that contentment, that you will feel, my brothers and my sisters, upon leaving of the haram, right, and Allah Azza wa will always give you that which is better. And this is my favorite hadith. You don't leave something for the sake of Allah except Allah will always give you that which is better. Right? The second point, my brothers and my sisters, that will definitely put you in a uh, peaceful place is learning about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Right? Again, I was explaining this yesterday to some of our youngsters. Right? Why is it at times when we hear the command of Allah and what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, our hearts don't become activated, right? Our hearts don't get moved, right? Nothing uh, strikes us within, 
right? Why is that my brothers and my sisters? We hear Allah saying something and then it is as if any random individual is saying something similar. Why is it my brothers and my sisters when our friends or people that we love or we look up to instruct, instruct us to do X, Y, and Z, we may even listen to them more than when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us out. Why is that my brothers and my sisters, right? I'll mention to you inshallah ta'ala. Would you agree my brothers and my sisters that we respect and we honor people and we look up to them based on what we come to know about them without a shadow of a doubt? I normally tend to give the example of someone who has chosen to marry a particular individual. Let's just say Muhammad, he found Fatima. Why did he pick Fatima over everyone else? Right? He picked her over everyone else simply because of what he came to know about her. She has this wonderful trait. She has that wonderful trait. Right? She, mashallah, tabarak wa ta'ala, is good in her religion. Uh, and then she, he finds her good looking as well and then later on he finds out mashallah she pray, prays in the night and he's thinking to himself I've hit the jackpot and his love increases the more you know about somebody or you learn about them the more likely you're going to respect them and look up to them right this is uh, common sense this is how we build relationships and how we grow closer to people right not in any way am I comparing the creation to Allah Azza wa Jal but when Allah tells us to do something and we don't know anything about him, we shouldn't expect our hearts to become activated. And the only source of knowledge that we have of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are his names and his attributes, right? And I'm talking about learning about all of these different names that he has. And the more you learn about it, the more my brothers and my sisters, you will be fearful of him and you will be conscious of Allah Azza wa Jal. And you'll be able to deal with the trials and tribulations and hardships and difficulties that come your way in a very different light. One of my favorite names of Allah Azza wa Jal, or should I say maybe the two favorite names of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, right? Innahu huwa al-alim al-hakim. Allah is all-knowing and he's all-wise. Right? I believe it's mentioned in Surah Yusuf either three or four times. And we know Surah Yusuf is filled with trials and tribulations. His father Yaqub, not only did he lose Yusuf who was most beloved to him, and later on ended up losing his second most beloved son. And that was Ben Yameen. Right? SubhanAllah. And these names kept on popping up in this chapter. Innahu al alim al hakim. Allah is all knowing and He's all wise. Everything that happens to you, don't think, my brothers and my sisters, Allah Azza wa is unaware. But everything happens under the divine wisdom of Allah Azza wa Jal. You may not necessarily see the wisdom in it and you're thinking to yourself, why is this happening to me? Right? A couple of years may go by, my brothers and my sisters. And then we say to ourselves, if that didn't happen, I would not have this today. Brothers and sisters who may have had marriage proposals, right, that didn't go through, can perhaps relate to this. He tried everything in his power to get married to her and vice versa. She wanted him so badly thinking that he will be her Prince Charming and the one that brings her the happiness that she's looking for. But you tried and it never went ahead. And you're thinking to yourself, why is Allah doing this to me? Years go by, Allah blesses you with a spouse that, had, that has characteristics and traits that the mind can't imagine. And this is when you say, if that didn't happen, I would not have this today. I've seen many people who go through divorce and say that which is similar, right? Now that which they have is far greater than, they, than that which they had once upon a time, right? So my brothers and my sisters, now this puts things into context. You start making sense of things, right? When you begin to learn about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Right? And we can only do this, my brothers and my sisters, by learning about who He is. Right? Learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's greatness. Mm. The next uh, trait, my brothers and my sisters, or act that indeed softens one's heart. Right? Am I okay for time? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. This next trait, my brothers and my sisters, that, um, you know, softens an individual's heart, my brothers and my sisters is Mu'amalatun Nasib al lutf It is to treat the people with kindness. Ibn al-Qayyim again he says, فَلَيْسَ لِلْقَلْبِ أَنْفَعُ مِنْ مُعَامَلَةِ النَّاسِ بِاللُطْفِ وَحُبِّ الْخَيْرِ لَهُمْ He says there's nothing more beneficial on the heart than treating the people with kindness and loving good for them. Right, this is also one of my favorite. SubhanAllah. Right. My brothers and my sisters, next time you see somebody struggling, go and help them. Go out your way 
to assist them. See how you feel almost instantly. You see an elderly lady who's maybe carrying uh, heavy shopping bags. Take that from her. Go and help her and see, my brothers and my sisters, how you will feel almost instantly. And then here it says, loving good for them. That which comes to mind is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu when he said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه One will not be a true believer until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. Right? I'll give a couple of examples inshallah ta'ala to put this into context. Right? Allah Azza wa Jal has caused your business to flourish. However, it wasn't easy getting there. You went through hardships and difficulties. Right? You had to fail a couple of times. You may have, uh, you know, lost out you know, a time or two, right? And been financially hit because of the choices that you made. However, now you have the recipe of success, the recipe to be able to, uh, you know, reach a uh, prosperity, or should I say, to reach a level of prosperity when it comes to managing the finances, right? And doing business. Uh, somebody comes to you and he says, can you give me advice? I'm thinking of maybe starting something similar. This is when this aspect, my brothers and my sisters, of your Iman is tested. Are you now going to give him the recipe? Are you going to tell him, right, go and make the same mistakes that I made and eventually you'll get there. Loving for others what you love for yourself. See how you feel almost instantly, right? Other cases, my brothers and my sisters, likewise, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you the recipe of success when it comes to maybe uh, becoming very successful, in your studies, right? But you had to hit a couple of brick walls before you eventually got there. And you can now summarize or maybe shorten this individual's path to success. How are you going to deal with this situation? You love for your brother what you love for yourself, right? See how you feel almost instantly, my brothers and my sisters. And when you traverse a path of such, my brothers and my sisters, you will see that your heart will become protected from this very evil trait and that is none other than al-hasad, envy, right? Envy, my brothers and my sisters, that has destroyed the hearts of many. It is one of the afat, one of the evil traits that one's heart, my brothers and my sisters, can become sickened by, right? Subhanallah, what it actually leads to. You know, I really like what Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, he says. He said, وَقَدْ لَا تَخْلُوا مِنْهُ النُّفُوسِ It could be that one can just not protect his heart from al-hasad. It's just bound to be touched by it, right? And then he says, uh, the least that you can do in this kind of case is not to start oppressing that individual. فَإِذَا حَسَدْتَ فَلَا تَبْغِي Right? If you're going to be compelled with being afflicted by the sickness of envy, the least you can do is not violate against that individual, right? Keep it inside of you, right? وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَحْمِلُهُ الْحَسَدُ عَلَى الْغِيبَةِ فَيَجْمَعُ بَيْنَ أَمْرَيْنِ Right? سَيِّئَيْنِ وَأَمْرَيْنِ عَظِيمَيْنِ And some people, subhanAllah, because of hasad, it now leads them to backbiting that individual, right? So one individual, my brothers and my sisters, just does good for the people. It protects him from a lot of this evil, my brothers and my sisters, that has taken people down very, very dark places. Subhanallah al -Azib. Right? So be someone, my brothers and my sisters, that really goes out his way to help others. Right? And you will see, inshallah ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opening doors for you. One of my favorite the hadith is uh, when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَاللَّهُ فِي عَوْنِ الْعَبْدِ مَا كَانَ الْعَبْدُ فِي عَوْنِ أخي. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the aid and assistance of his servant as long as he's going around helping others. This is why some of the great righteous predecessors and scholars of the past, whenever they needed something so badly from Allah Azza wa Jal, it could be that they were trying to understand a certain passage in a book. They were readers trying to understand. And he really needed, right, uh, this knowledge to perhaps become understood to him and subhanallah because he was finding so much difficulty and he was really struggling with it he would stop whatever he was doing and rush towards helping others hoping by him doing so that door will be opened Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar and isn't this exactly how the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was he made time for the people right I don't believe in this concept of I am too busy and that is simply because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right, he was a judge, he was a general, 
He was the Mufti. He was a man, right, who had multiple wives. He had kids as well. He was extremely busy. Likewise, he was doing the Imam's job. Imam is more than everything that I mentioned, my brothers and my sisters, right? Um, SubhanAllah, so the Messenger was occupied. He did marriage counseling. People would always be coming up to him, asking him questions. You can imagine, SubhanAllah, uh, you know, how overwhelmed the Messenger used to be, right? I, I sometimes think about this, SubhanAllah, a lot because we can sometimes get overwhelmed by the amount of engagements that come our way and like imagine the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Subhanallah al -Azim. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was still never busy when one day he was approached by a woman who, had, who was mentally challenged, right? She had something in her aql, right? So Subhanallah, she said, Oh Messenger of Allah, I need you to help me, right? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't turn around and say, I'm too busy. No, he said, Ya Umma Fulan, O Mother of So-and-So, Take me wherever you need me to go and I'll be there to support you. Subhanallah. So he went out his way. She took him here and then eventually there and then Subhanallah. Whenever she when she was done, right, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam continued with his day-to-day -day dealings. Right? Knowing Subhanallah. You help the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you. And he's the one that mentioned that hadith that I quoted earlier. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the assistance of his servant as long as they are helping others. Right? And the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if Allah is by your side, it doesn't matter if the whole dunya is on the other side. Everyone else that is breathing and walking on the face of this earth is on the other side. Right? You, my brothers and my sisters, you will have that which you are in need of, right? So don't say, my brothers and my sisters, this person only calls me when he needs me, right? He only calls me when he needs me. Now, in fact, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given you this opportunity now to acquire such great reward and giving yourself a chance of being assisted and aided by Allah, him being by your side, right? You should be jumping at this opportunity because you know, imagine I was somebody that doesn't have any skills to help on. I'll be missing out on such great reward, right? What really, subhanAllah, you know, I, 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 uh, a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi that's honestly really, really amazing, which I think is worth mentioning. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ لَلَّهِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِلْخَلْقِ The most beloved people to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala are those that are most beneficial to them. I'll say that again. Isn't this exactly what we're trying to acquire? We want to become beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal. We want to have that love of Allah Azza wa Jal, right? Piercing through our hearts. He is telling us the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the most beloved people to Allah are those that are more most beneficial for the people. And then he says, وَأَحَبُّ الْعَمَالِ لِلَّهِ سُرُورٌ تُدْخِلُهُ فِي أَخِيكَ الْمُسْلِمِ أَوْ عَلَى مُسْلِمٍ Right? The most beloved actions to Allah is happiness that you bring to another Muslim, another believer, right? And then he gives a couple of examples, breaking down. Perhaps you may need an example to make uh, this a little bit more clear, right? Because subhanAllah, bringing happiness to someone is very, very broad. So he gives a couple of examples. Perhaps you may know somebody who's requiring such help. He says, أو تكشف عنه قربة أو تقضي عنه دينا. You see someone, my brothers and my sisters, that is so distressed, right? Is in a spot of bother. You have the ability now to remove this. Go and do so. This is from the most beloved actions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? You knowing that you can do something about this individual's distress that he is currently going through. Or you've come to know now, my brothers and my sisters, here the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, he has a debt. And you have now the finances to help this individual pay off his debt. And then he says, oh, You know this individual, my brothers and my sisters, is hungry. Right? And he doesn't have the finances to be able to provide for himself. Go and remove the hunger. Right? SubhanAllah. That he is going through. Right? Something again, SubhanAllah, that comes to mind. It reminded me of the prostitute the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about who saw a dog that was thirsty and then quenched the thirst of this dog. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended up forgiving her. So Ibn Al-Qaymi commented on this and he said, if Allah Azza wa Jal forgave a prostitute for quenching the thirst of a dog, then he says, how about the person who sees uh, Muslims, subhanAllah, that don't have clothes, they don't have water, they don't have food, and then he goes out his way to provide them with these essentials. SubhanAllah. It's more of a reason that Allah Azza will forgive this individual, right? And give him what he's looking for. He, Allah Azza wa Jal, forgave the prostitute for quenching the thirst of a dog. How about the person who goes out and quenches the thirst and feeds and clothes, right, human beings? Allahu Akbar. So to complete the hadith, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Wali an amshi ma akhi al-Muslim fi hajatin ahabu ilayya min an a'takif fi had al-Masjid shahra." Right? He said that I accompany my brother in that which he needs. It is more beloved to me than doing i'tikaf. I'tikaf means when somebody now sits devoutedly inside of the house of Allah Azza wa Jal. Normally, we Muslims we would do i'tikaf in the last ten days of Ramadan. Right? He's saying, me doing i'tikaf, sitting there devoutedly for a whole month, right? That which is more beloved for me is to go out my way helping others in the needs uh, and their essentials and that which they require of myself. The last point, my brothers and my sisters, that I want to share, inshallah ta'ala, from that which softens an individual's heart. And we are in dire need of it in today's day and age. It is lowering one's gaze, right? Lowering one's gaze. Mujahid, rahimahullah ta'ala, was from the students of Abdullah ibn Abbas. Abdullah ibn Abbas, the cousin of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. From his most prominent students was someone called Mujahid ibn Jabbar, right? Who was an expert when it came to knowing the meanings of the Quran. He said, غَدُّ الْبَصَرِ عَنْ مَحَارِمِ اللَّهِ يُورِثُ حُبَّ اللَّهِ Lowering your gaze from that which is haram, the things that displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, causes one to earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And I'm not going to sit here, my brothers and my sisters, and talk as if this is easy, right? Especially now in this very difficult uh, society that we may be in, right? Where you see, subhanAllah, you know, uh, all types and forms of sexualization in order to grab the attention of the consumer, right? The product is being sell, sold, and then you see, subhanAllah, a level of sexualization that takes place just to grab your attention. It's hard. And I know, especially now with the spread of social media, how difficult it may be. But my brother, I want you to know the following, and sister, that may be tested by this, right? You do something that which is pleasing to Allah, such as lowering your grace from that which is haram, look at the benefits that come out with it. And this is what Ibn al-Qayyim ta'ala mentions. Number one, حَلَاوَةُ الْإِيمَانِ وَلَذَّتُهُ فَمَنْ تَرَكَ شَيْئًا لِلَّهِ عَوَّضَهُ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا مِنْ A halawa, a sweetness, a contentment that comes with it, that you will feel inside of your heart. Like I've said time and time again, right? this ladha, this sweetness, this contentment, this satisfaction, this fulfillment that one feels and experiences, my brothers and my sisters, is something that cannot be bought with money. Right, multi-millionaires, they wish they had. This is my brothers and my sisters. Right, so doing so, my brothers and my sisters, lowering your gaze, right, Allah Azza wa will bless you with this. And then he says, the quote that I always love to mention, whoever leaves something for the sake of Allah, Allah will give him that which is better. Number two, he says, Nurul qalbi wa sihatul farasa. Allah Azza wa will enlighten his heart. And then he says, he will gift him with al farasa, which means intuition. There are people, my brothers and my sisters, they can see evil from far. Right? They can see evil from far. They can smell it, as they say. Right? Because Allah Azza wa Jal gives them this intuition of being able to judge a situation perhaps a lot better than others. And this is the gift that Allah Azza wa Jal gives to that individual. And number three, my brothers and my sisters, قُوَّةُ الْقَلْبِ وَثَبَاتُهُ وَشَجَاعَتُهُ وَيَحْرَبُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنْهُ Allah Azza wa Jal will give him a brave and strengthened heart. He will be firm, my brothers and my sisters, and then the shaitan will run away from him. Right? The shaitan will run away from him. Right? It could be, my brothers and my sisters, that you are sitting under your blanket and you want to start viewing that which is displeasing to Allah. 
and you turn away from it and you get everything that I just mentioned. Or it could be my brothers and my sisters that you are walking side by side with your companion, right? And you now looking with the corner of your eye at that which you shouldn't be looking at is something that's even hidden from the one that is walking with you. But you turn away. And this is from the private secret acts just between you and Allah Azza wa Jal, right? One of the greatest ways, my brothers and my sisters, of strengthening your heart and staying firm upon the religion is doing righteous deeds that nobody knows about. And normally when we speak about righteous deeds, that which comes to mind is praying in the last third of the night while everyone is asleep, right? The connection that a Muslim should have with righteous deeds, honestly, my brothers and my sisters, is absolutely immense. The acts that nobody knows about, right? And it's not just specific to, you know, the night prayer that which you would do inside of your room of good deeds that nobody knows about. It could be that you're walking with your friend. The corner of your eye, you see something that is very huh, attractful and you don't look at it because you know Allah is watching and he doesn't know that you've just lowered your gaze. Huh? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us that which is best and make us from those who meet him with that sound heart. Naam. Barakallahu feekum. Wa ahsanallahu ilaykum. Honestly, I'm really, really pleased to be here and uh, to be meeting my brothers and sisters here in South Africa, all the way down under, <laughs> right? Jazakum Allah khair, inshallah, for having me on here as well. And uh, hopefully in the future we can come on again, inshallah.